Hi, I'm Melissa Brooks with Be Glad. Be Glad is a professional development organization in the areas of language acquisition and literacy. We take teaching theory and transform it into incredible practical teaching strategies. In this video, we will be focusing on maintaining high expectations in the early childhood education classroom. Learners meet the expectations of their teachers. If the teacher has high expectations for all students, they meet those expectations. If they have low expectations for their students, they meet those expectations. Dr. Robert Rosenthal authored the phrase, the Pygmalion effect, to describe this psychological phenomenon. Teacher expectations form the environment that creates a self-fulfilling prophecy. In order to support the success and achievement of all students, high expectations are a must. Teachers who have generally high expectations for students practice flexible grouping, offer students choices, use a facilitative approach, give all students the same opportunities to learn, continually monitor students' progress, and encourage student autonomy. Here are five things that can be done to create an environment that encourages high expectations for all students. Number one, teach to the high, provide support for all. Our classrooms need to have an environment where all students are expected to succeed. And this may look different for each child. As educators, it is our responsibility to provide every student with the tools that they need to succeed. This begins by providing a rigorous curriculum and the scaffolds that every child needs in the classroom. The Picture Dictionary is a strategy that introduces high level academic vocabulary through phonemic awareness, letter recognition, letter formation, visual representations, and movement. In the following clip, we will see how these skills are presented to all students and how scaffolds are introduced. The first letter in this word says K. It's tricky because it does sound like a K. This is the letter C. Everybody say C with me. C. C. Oh, I need a detective. Someone who can come and find the letter C hiding on our alphabet strip. Let me see. My friend, please teach me your name. Rowan. Rowan, come up and be a detective and come touch that letter C. Yeah, there's a good spot this way, my friend. Hmm, it's tricky. Is it this one or this one? This one. That one. Okay. My friends, Rowan gets to trace the letter C on the first line. So you get to use my marker and you're gonna start at the top and come all the right way around. But while he does that, we're gonna do it in the air. Ready? Get your fingers way up in the air and you can write it. Start at the top, come around and stop. The letter C, say it with me, C. Oh, good job. High five. Number two, gradual release of responsibility. Modeling expectations and allowing students to practice with their peers before they try activities on their own increases the success for all learners. This begins by modeling whole class what the targets are and what they look like. Once students have seen the activity in whole group, then it's time to try it out in small groups. Once these steps are completed, then individual activities are more likely to produce positive results. Number three, student-led learning. Classroom instruction needs to empower students. Students need to feel a sense of control in their environment. In the following clip, you will see a student sharing information with peers with teacher support. He needs to do what, Cammie? He needs to tell him. Tell him. Produce food. How did you learn that? Produce food. Because I know. Who told you? What's her name? <coughs> Cammie. Cammie. All right. Let's help her spell produce. Number four, assessment plus one. Assessment helps teachers to determine where and what kind of supports to provide for students to allow them to achieve advancement in a competency or in a particular skill. 
Assessment helps educators to determine which kinds of supports to provide to their students so that they may advance to their next level of achievement. Practicing a growth mindset is necessary for both teachers and students. When teachers have expectations that our students will succeed, we provide the scaffolds that are necessary for them to succeed. Students need to try new strategies and seek input from others when they're stuck. They need this repertoire of approaches, not just sheer effort to learn and improve. Number five, balancing positive habits of interdependence with self-reliance. Classrooms with high expectations balance whole group activities, small group activities, and individual activities. Each type of activity supports learners in different ways. Modeling an activity sets the target or shows the expectations it allows students to see what it looks like to achieve success. Small group practice allows students who need the support of their peers to practice an activity before they try it on their own. This builds soft skills for college and career readiness. They practice the skills of interdependence or relying on others and self-reliance. When students find success with others, they are more likely to find success on their own. Share an experience where maintaining high expectations has made a positive difference for you or someone else. Comment below. For more effective strategies, check out our online trainings available in K-12, Spanish, and Pre-K. A link to our website is in the description box below. Don't forget to click on the subscribe button to receive new videos. Teach on and be glad.